flows. Love needs no reference. <clears throat> Love needs no reference. And that is the beauty of love and its freedom as well. Hate is a bondage. Hate is imprisonment imposed by you upon yourself. How does this happen? Hate creates hate. Hate provokes hate. If you hate somebody, you are creating hate in that person's heart for yourself. And the whole world exists in hate, in destruction, in violence, in jealousy, and in competitiveness. If competitiveness is to be, you have to be competitive with your moment that is going by. How did you deal in the last moment and from there you, are, you have learned how are you going to deal with the next moment. People are at each other's throat either in reality that is in action or at least in their mind. Look deep within you and in their thoughts Everybody is murdering and killing. That is why we have created hell out of this beautiful earth, which could have become a paradise. We need to understand our reality. We may be looking very good, talking very pleasant words, but deep down, what kind of thoughts, what kind of things are going on. Love and earth, love and earth becomes a paradise again. Allow love to blossom in you and if everyone does that, earth will become a paradise once again. And the immense beauty of love is that it has no reference. Love, crum love comes from you for no reason at all. It is inner flowering. It is the fragrance and beauty of your inner flowering. It is your outpouring bliss. It is your sharing of your heart, sharing of your song, song arising out of your being and sharing this sharing is so joyful hence one shares sharing for sharing's sake for no other motive or purpose but the love that you have known in the past is not the love buddha is talking about or I am speaking about. Your love is nothing but the other side of it. Hence, your love has a reference. Somebody has been beautiful to you yesterday. He has, he was so nice to you that you feel a great love for him. This is what I mean by reference. This is not really love. Instead, this is the other side of hate. The reference proves it. Or somebody is going to be nice to you tomorrow. The way he smiled at you. The way he talked to you. The way he invited you to his house tomorrow, he is going to be loving to you and great love is arising. This too needs a reference. This is not the love Buddhas talk about. This is hate disguised as love. 
That is why your love can turn into hate any moment you realize. One moment you had been so much loving to this person, next moment there is a hate. A scratch a person just a little bit tries to throw a small pebble in the tranquil water of his inner lake and love disappears and in place hate spurts. What kind of words begin to come? It is not even skin deep. Even the so-called lovers are continuously fighting, nagging and destructive to one another. Maybe in thoughts, maybe in reality and people think this is love. Your love is not really love. It is it is very opposite. It is hate disguised as love, camouflaged as love, parading as love. But this is what it is happening. It is like a bitter hate pill coated with love's sugar coating. True love has no reference. It thinks not of yesterdays. It thinks not of tomorrows. It is a spontaneous true love. It is a spontaneous welling up of joy in you and the sharing of it. It wells up the joy and shares it and then it is showering of it. There is no reason why I am showering love on you, why I am sharing my presence, my being every morning through this live recording. What is my gain? There is no other reason for no other motive. There is just tremendous joy of sharing what you have. Like a flower that has blossomed, it cannot contain its beauty and fragrance. It goes on sharing. The awakened one goes on sharing because he has blossomed and he cannot contain the beauty and fragrance of the flower that has blossomed. Mind feels very good with lies because the mind becomes the inventor of lies, the doer of lies. And as the mind becomes the doer, ego is created. With truth, you have nothing to do. And because you have nothing to do, mind ceases and with the mind the ego also disappears it evaporates that is the risk the ultimate risk you have moved towards that risk you have taken a few steps staggering stumbling groping with many doubts, but still you have taken a few steps. That is why I call you Bodhisattva. Buddha explains several stages of the journey of transformation. Bodhisattva is one. After that, the journey continues, it reaches to Buddha and Dhampad which is which contains the teachings of Buddha can only be taught 
to bodhisattvas, those who have attained to this state. The teachings of Buddha, the teachings of awakening cannot be taught to anyone other than one who has reached to that state. One who has moved towards that risk. Still there are doubts, but you are taking the step forward for the continuation of the inward journey. It cannot be the teachings of Buddha, the teachings of awakened one cannot be taught to ordinary mediocre humanity because it cannot be understood by them. My words cannot be understood by the masses. Only those who are along the path, the bodhisattvas, they can understand my words. That is why the viewership of these talks is very limited, not in thousands. These words of Buddha emerge out of inner silence, eternal silence. They can reach you only if you receive them in your inner silence. So first of all, the awakened one creates a situation that there is experience of inner silence and in these in that silence the inner silence the words begin to echo and you can hear their echo these words of buddha come from immense purity unless you become a vehicle a receptacle humble egoless alert and aware you will not be able to understand him and understand these words when they are spoken to you. Intellectually, you will understand them, but they, will, but they are very simply words, the simplest possible words, but their very simplicity often the simplicity of the words and their arrangements becomes a problem because you are not simple to understand simplicity. You need simplicity of heart for that. If your heart is simple, pulsating. To understand simplicity, you need simplicity of heart because only the simple heart only the simple heart can understand simple truth. These words, these messages have emerged out from the deep within of an awakened one of a Buddha. Teachings of Dham path, the way of Dham. Dham is the word used by Buddha for Dharma. The right, the, that which sustains, not translated as religion. Their simplicity becomes a problem because you are not simple. To understand simplicity, you need simple simplicity of heart, purity of heart. Only then simple words can be understood by the heart. Enough for now.